Today's episode of the WAC Podcast is brought to you by Hercules Tires, the official tire of the Western Athletic Conference. Now here are your hosts, Eric Danner and Rachel Vigil. What's going on, everybody? Eric Danner and Rachel Vigil coming at you from the WAC Digital Network Studios. And we have the Assistant Commissioner of Media Relations, Chris Thompson, sitting down with us. He's the man for everything you see going out on social media and the website. He's got all the deets going down. <laughs> I, I, I'm not sure I want everybody to know that. There's a lot of blame there, but uh, the WAC certainly a fun conference to cover. Yeah, if you have any issues with players of the week, <laughs> yeah. uh, any issues with press releases, Chris is your guy. Chris, we wanted to have you on today. Uh, big week in Denver. We're, we're of course, yeah. located here in Denver. Major League Baseball All-Star Game, Major League Baseball Draft also being held in Denver yeah. this past week. Uh, and you had a chance to go to the All-Star Game. We'll get to that in a minute. Let's start off with the draft picks. We had six guys taken Major League Baseball draft looked a little different this year. It looked different last year. Of course, there's only five rounds. Yeah. This year, only 20. It used to be 40. Six players taken. Uh, I guess no surprise to see some Sacramento State pitchers get taken. Right. I mean, I, I think uh, the Sac State pitchers, the Grand Canyon players that got picked, uh, Damon Keith, their player of the year out of California Baptist, none of them were really a surprise. Uh, I think with this 20-round, uh, baseball fans know minor league baseball made a change this year in terms of uh, limiting the number of teams, limiting the number of roster spots. So I think people are still kind of figuring it out. Um, but I think six players, 20 rounds, it's kind of on par with uh, what we've done in the past when it was a 40 round draft. And we'd usually see somewhere in that 12 to 15 range. So we're really right there. Grand Canyon had three players that were drafted as well. And obviously we got to see them in uh, Mesa this year. Anybody surprising to you that didn't get picked or you know, it's always hard to tell. And with 20 rounds, it's 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 tough. You get teams. I think it was the Los Angeles Angels took 20 pitchers uh, because that was what their need was. They took 19 college pitchers and one prep pitcher. So you really see teams. It's it's a draft that's unlike other drafts where the NFL, you might see, hey, we need a left tackle. We need a left tackle this fall. Uh, Major League Baseball draft is yeah, we might need a catcher in three or four years. So that's who we're going to pick right now. So, you know, it's kind of hard to tell. Uh, there's going to be a, a couple student athletes here or there that um, sign free agent contracts and still get to play minor league ball. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see. Big, big success to them. But the WAC has a rich baseball history. So it's exciting, I think, uh, to just keep adding to it. Yeah, Rachel and I were talking yesterday. In years past, when it did have 40 rounds, you would see players, you know, if they're drafted 38th round, might opt to go back to school. With it only being 20 rounds, I, I'm guessing we'll probably see most of those guys sign contracts. Yeah, I would guess those six would sign contracts. I, I mean, always it, it obviously depends, and it depends on bonus pools and all that. There's a whole bunch of math involved that I'm not smart enough <laughs> to figure out. Uh, but Major League Baseball, there's a limit on how much you can spend. So the Yankees can't go out and be like, hey, here's $100 million to our 19th round pick mm -hmm. uh, just to get them to sign. Um but I, I think you're right in that we are going to start seeing more players just go ahead and sign if they're in that top 20, which has always kind of been that spot anyway. Uh, at least college players you'll probably see signed. There's probably going to be some prep players that maybe went 10 to 20 round um, that might opt to go uh, play college ball and see if they can prove their draft stock. But, yeah, I think that's where we're going to be. And a follow-up on that, Chris, was I, I had seen there was, you know, potentially with the new – name image likeness rule that players might opt to come back depending on you know if they can get some of those you know agreement deals yeah you never know but uh there's also that thought of you know you're one one pitch away from blowing out your elbow you're one step away from maybe tearing an achilles or tearing an acl and just like coming back can help your draft stock it can hurt your draft stock so there's there's kind of a gamble there um and if their dream is to play professional baseball and they get a good draft pick and they have a good offer and they have a good team to go to, you know, go for it. You can always come back to college. True. Oh, so the number five pick, Colton Kausner. 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 I want to make sure I get that yep. one correct. Uh, coming from Sam Houston State. And although technically he didn't play in the draft, we're kind of like bringing him in and we're 
we're bringing him with us. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm always kind of one where I don't like to share. Um, I don't really like if when the the Pac-12 <laughs> claims the Arizona Arizona State titles from the '60s and '70s, or uh, you know, we claim Aaron Judge. We'll split that with the Mountain right, West. Right. It was, I think, he was like two and two. But um, so you know, I'm going to give the Southland credit. He's a Southland player, but but we're very excited for Colton. We're very excited uh, for the Sam Houston program, and we wish him nothing but success. And uh, when he makes that big league debut, we'll make sure to make a big deal out of it. <laughs> and kind of interesting that the draft being in July this year as opposed to June, if it had been in June when it normally was, then, yeah, there wouldn't have been – we wouldn't have necessarily been able to claim him as we are now. Right. But uh, you mentioned Aaron Judge. Uh, he was in the Major League Baseball All-Star Game. We're shooting this on Wednesday. It was Tuesday night. Uh, played in the WAC. Was WAC Freshman of the Year back in 2011, I believe, 2010, somewhere in there. And you had a chance to uh, to work at the uh, All Star Game, so this this is an opportunity that comes yeah, too often. Yeah, some of the festivities. It, it was really exciting. Um, the the All Star Game was supposed to be in Atlanta, got moved to Denver in I believe April. So, uh, Major League Baseball, Colorado Rockies, the Denver Sports Commission, they did a tremendous job of pulling it all together. Um, I spent most of my time at the Colorado Convention Center at what they called Playball Park, which was the Fan Fest. Um, but it was really fun. There were a lot of Major League bigwigs that were there. Um, not many current players because of the COVID protocols, but a lot of legends yeah. that came through. When you're walking down the hallway and you run into CC Sabathia or uh, Rolly Fingers or somebody <laughs> like that, I mean, as a sports fan, as a baseball fan, it, it's it's uh, it's an amazing opportunity. Does Rolly Fingers still have the mustache? He does. Oh know? yeah, okay. yeah. He's I. And he's I, a big dude. I remember seeing yeah, him once. He's, yeah. He, I mean, he, for those of you who don't know, and Rachel Rolly Fingers was. Well retired before you were born. <laughs> uh, he had the uh, handlebar mustache. mustache. The for mustache. Yes. But he's what, 6'3", six, 6'4"? Six, yeah. Mean, he's, a, he's a big guy. He's and... a big guy. He's a big guy. But, um, you know, it was just exciting to see him as, with a bunch of other legends that are there. They have the opportunity to come and meet fans and sign autographs. But, um, it, you know, it was a tremendous event. I volunteered on uh, three of the days. And um, I took my eight-year-old son, Oscar, on Sunday. And we were there for probably five five and a half hours him just running around he got to go on a uh, uh he got to do a field clinic with uh, former major leaguer justin morneau wow um awesome. we met a whole bunch of other players throughout the the tournament i met uh, jenny finch and and uh wow lisa fernandez so many just I'm jealous just just legends i mean you yeah. absolutely just see people that are legends and and i mean you see how big of an event this is the all-star game is really to major league baseball with the super bowl is to the nfl in terms of uh getting fans involved and, and seeing fans from all sorts of teams and um yeah it, it was tremendous you know it's an opportunity it only comes if you're lucky enough to live in a major league baseball city it only comes to your city maybe once every 30 years mm -hmm. denver's been lucky enough to have it twice in the last 25 years and um you know, who knows when it's going to be here again or when we're going to have the opportunity to attend. So got to take that uh, opportunity when you have it. I'm interested to hear from both of you. A lot of people are saying with this up and coming class and everything else that's going, these younger players are really bringing like Major League Baseball back on the, the market, I guess I should say. What are your both <laughs> takeaways from it? You know, it's kind of been one of those things where we always know that there's baseball around, but you're not right. like super hype. But these younger players are really just bringing it back. I think there's a lot of players out there that uh, are having a lot of fun with the game. And I think that's what's going to happen. Uh, Tatis Jr. comes to mind. Um, 22 uh, years old. Bo Bichette, yeah. who we all know is brought Rockies fans. <laughs> we all know his dad and felt really old yesterday in one of the interviews. Dante Bichette said that when the All-Star game was here in 1998, Bo was in his arms as four-month-old. Mm -hmm. So, um, <laughs> That makes me feel old. You know, I think I think there's something to be said there. You know, I when I was a uh, um, youth, I remember uh, Tony Gwynn, Cal Ripken Jr., Ken Griffey Jr., uh, Frank Thomas, guys like that 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 were really just fun and exciting to watch. Mm -hmm. And I, I think I think there's there's that personality that's back that um, baseball lost a little bit with uh, some of the steroid stuff that they dealt with. They lost some fans, but. I, I think it's coming back. I mean, if just just based off of this week in Denver and mm -hmm. and the fans and how excited people were, there's still a lot of baseball fans out there. Yeah, Tony Gwynn, a former whack. That's right. I was going to put that in there. Rachel, yeah, I, I kind of agree with Chris there that 
there's so many young players. And, and to be honest with you, I'm probably more of a casual major league fan. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm watching the game and there's a lot of names I'm not familiar with, which normally isn't the case. Usually there's the big stars, yep. Aaron Judge, of course, you know, former WAC player as well. But yeah, there was a lot of players I didn't recognize. But then you see Fernando Tatis and how talented he is. There's a, a, some bright future ahead, I think, for, for baseball. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I'm not a huge baseball person in general, so I've even enjoyed like watching everybody and the home run derby, of course. Well, and so Shohei Otani is just, I, you know, I tried to tell my son that like this, this type of player does not come around. <laughs> like once in a like, lifetime type This player. is Babe Ruth. Like this is yeah. once every other lifetime yeah. type yeah. of player. Um, so just watching him and, and the fun that he plays and um, it, you know, it's really the whole worldwide game aspect has really um has really come to light with major league baseball i know a lot of other sports have tried to do it and baseball's always been an international game but just the availability um that it that it's able to be broadcast worldwide very easily and that fans from around the globe are able to watch the game is really going to help it grow and seeing the crowd there i mean that was pretty amazing like you know it's I guess, you know, we, we've been saying, OK, we're getting out of COVID. And that was kind of the first sporting event in the United States that I've watched with 52,000 people, 52, yeah. yeah. people yeah. and everybody excited, you know, the home run derby the night before, too. So mm -hmm. yeah. very fun to see. And Jeff, our, the WAC commissioner, was at the home run derby, too. So I. He, he may have been at the game too. I'm, True. I, been, I just I saw the seen. picture from the home run <laughs> yeah. derby. That was so much fun. Like, I can't even imagine downtown had to be so exciting. Yeah, very, very exciting. It was uh Fun event event to be a part of, and uh, you know I'm looking maybe for an opportunity to <laughs> to get out to another one. If I'm like, well, it's in Kansas City, I could go there. Like I can make that. Drive. That's not bad. <laughs> um, you know, it's I any baseball fan. I think if you ever have the opportunity uh, to go to the All Star game, even if you can't go to the game, just the activities around it go it's a tremendous uh, tremendous event and it's going to be in los angeles next year that's right in the middle of whack country so you know <laughs> la fans southern cal fans get there Sneaky. so you're gonna have fun yeah right yeah well one other thing football preview day coming up here shortly yep. for you what are you looking forward to most with having football back in the whack oh well it's not the workload i'll tell you that <laughs> you know it's exciting just like we talked about uh, the rich history of the WAC, we're getting ready, 60th year coming up here. Um, just the opportunity to to come to bring football back to to be able to celebrate some of that stuff that maybe we've kind of um, shied away from in the past because we didn't want to bring up, hey, we don't have football anymore. Mm -hmm. Now we have it. It's at a different level, but I think that's I'm really excited about being at the FCS level because we have the opportunity for national championships. Mm -hmm. We have the defending national mm -hmm. champion in and, and football fans know college football fans know if you're not in the sec or the big 10, maybe PAC 12, ACC, big yeah. 12, it's really hard for you to even get the opportunity to earn a national championship where we're going to be in a situation where it's not unlikely for us to have two teams in mm -hmm. even three teams. in. you look at the big sky, sometimes they have five teams in uh, so having that opportunity to uh, really celebrate our programs and help promote championship programs is, is really exciting. And I think it will help bring attention to all of our sports as well. And that, that's another thing that I'm really excited about. That football preview day will be uh, July 28th, uh, Wednesday. So two weeks from today as we're shooting this and that'll be at the Woodlands uh, just outside of Houston. Uh, Chris, one of your other duties, uh, I, I know you update record books and, th and those kind of things. Now you got to bring back the WAC uh, football record book, which you won't have to update, I guess. But uh, you know, whenever I'm on these podcasts, there's a good yeah. opportunity to give Dave Chaffin a yes. shout out. Yes. So um, I'll give Dave another shout out. He did a really good job uh, as the last football SID in the WAC, I guess, of making sure the record book uh, was was kept up and kept up to date. Um, really, right now, I'm only having to do some formatting things, but. Um, you know, it, it's exciting again to look at some of those names and see some of these players that that have played in the NFL that now these players are going to be able to to um, kind of attach their name to mm -hmm. that. Hey, running backs, you played in the same conference now as Marshall Falk and LaDainian Tomlinson linebackers, you have Brian Erlacher to look at. Uh, there's there's some tremendous, tremendous players and 
uh, I, you know, I think for those programs to just be associated with a conference that has national championships, has a Heisman trophy, has all of that stuff, um, elevates their programs as well. And, and, uh, it, it's not very often that you're kind of the newcomer that is kind of a power right away. Mm -hmm. And I really think, especially with Sam Houston, but, but with uh, Stephen F and, and Adeline Christian and Tarleton and Dixie, you're going to be right there. When Southern Utah joins us, they're going to be right there. Lamar's always competitive. We're going to have a competitive pro uh, conference from day one. And um, that's going to show up in the record books when I'm updating <laughs> it again next January or, or whenever that time comes. It's so exciting. There's so much fun stuff coming to WAC, and I'm definitely excited for this upcoming semester. But Chris, as always, thanks for hopping on. All with right. Us. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, thank you for having me. When we come back, we're going to talk to Andre Jones, one of the winners of the Stan Bates Award. You're listening to the WAC Podcast. Hercules Tires is the official tire of the Western Athletic Conference and for over 65 years has been providing tires with unbeatable quality at an unmatched value. Whatever the vehicle and whatever the terrain, Hercules Tires invites you to ride on our strength. For a retailer near you, visit HerculesTires.com. Welcome back to the Live Podcast. Eric Danner, Rachel B. Hill with you. And we've got a special guest in Andre Jones from Utah Valley Track and Field. Andre, how are you? I'm good. How are you guys doing? We're doing well. Congratulations on the Stan Bates Award and just a successful Thanks. career at Utah Valley overall. Thank you. I appreciate that. We just came out uh, today. We're, we're shooting this on Wednesday with the uh, announcement, Andre. Were you at all surprised? I mean, the Stan Bates Award, very prestigious, mm -hmm. takes into account not only athletics, but also academics and also uh, what you do around the community. So kind of tell us uh, how you found out and kind of uh, what, what your feeling was there. Yeah, so I was actually just doing a job interview. <clears throat> and then I got a text from a coach said, congrats on your Stan Bates Award. And I was like, what? Like, well, wait a minute. And then I looked, and I saw, like, I was just watching the press review, like, when, the press release once you guys called me. And, uh, no, I was just, I'm just kind of in shock right now. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I'm glad we're going to be one of the first people to talk to you then as you hear about <laughs> this information. But when you were going into school, obviously, you're about to get your master's here in a little bit. We'll touch on that in a few. But when you first were a freshman, was this part of the goal is to, one, do well academically, but also to stay involved with the community? Uh, yeah, it definitely was something because I was just my whole life. I just wanted to do something to give back, just be able to like show appreciation for kind of where I'm from, just kind of everyone around me that supports me. And um, just growing up being in, in athletics, I was always like the athlete student, you know what I'm saying? Not the student athlete, but my dad made sure to keep my head on straight. And he always told me, he's like, your school, if your school works, not if your schoolwork falls behind, you're not going to be in sports, you know? So I obviously love track and field and just love to compete. So I had to make sure that I was competing in the classroom as well as on the track. We're talking with Andre Jones, who is the Stan Bates Award winner, the Men's Stan Bates Award winner for the Western Athletic Conference. And Andre, I had a chance to talk to you back in 2020, right before the pandemic hit, as it turns out, to you and your brother, Adrian, and uh, Demetrius Romero, your half-brother as well. This is one of the more interesting stories, Rachel and I were talking about it, that you're a WAC champion. Your brother Adrian's a WAC champion, but you're a sprinter. He's a distance runner. And then Demetrius was a Big 12 champion wrestler. So you, you just mentioned the competitiveness and the family aspect. So I got to imagine that uh, that started at a very early age for you. Yeah, it definitely did. We were always just competing. So Demetrius is a little older than us. He's my full brother too, sorry. Oh, um, sorry, yeah. Okay. Yeah, but Demetrius, he, um, he's a little older than us, so he caught, and he's just bigger than us generally. Um, so he, uh, <laughs> He'd always kind of try to bully us around, you know, just kind of push us to compete harder in sports. And then it was funny because in high school, Adrian was a state champion. Demetrius was a state champion. But I was I got second place. I, I tripped going over the final hurdle. I got second place. So they held that over me since, like, the last four years. They was always talking, like, oh, you're the only one in high school that's not an All-American and not a state champ. So I'm like, I'm going I'm to get it back one day. Just wait a minute. <laughs> so then I went in 2019, won conference, two, two events, which none of them have done yet. Have not won twice in, in one event and um and then i was an academic all-american everything so they got nothing to hold over me and now i got mvp of the WAC for 2019 and now the stan bates scholarship so that's gonna be tough for them to top oh my goodness <laughs> i can feel the competitive nature coming through the camera right now i want to sit down why track and field though so i just ran track just because since we were little kids we used to always race like we started Anytime there was like, we're at a stoplight, we'd always race across the street. As soon as the little sign would go, the little walk sign, we'd just take off running across the street. And you just realized naturally that me and Adrian were just faster than 
kind of a lot of people. And it's funny because in middle school, we actually ran the same events. We ran the mile and hurdles. And Adrian used to beat me in everything. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> um, just Because he's, he's only one minute older than me, but he swears he's my big bro. Um, but he would beat me in every event. So then eventually he switched to start running distance. And I just kind of started to excel at hurdles and things like that. And we just kind of, just from there, we kind of just like, yeah, track's kind of what we want to do. We tried wrestling, tried football, tried basketball, but just always kept back to focus on track. We're talking with uh, uh, our Andre Jones, our winner of the Stan Bates Award. And Andre, with your brother, Adrian, and you mentioned he's a, he's a minute older, and <laughs> uh, but he's a, a distance runner and you're a sprinter. Um, when people think of twins, they, they always think, oh, they're, they're pretty similar uh, in terms of, you know, your build and, you know, maybe, maybe things that you can do, but running distance and running sprints, two totally different things. How did you guys go in different directions there? Yeah. So we just, he just naturally took towards distance a little more and I just took towards sprints. It could be just cause when I was younger. I was like, I'm not trying to run for that long. Like, that's just too much. <laughs> Make and, it fast. Um, yeah. Yeah. And fast. Like that's too much. No, so I got to high school and um, he started running cross country his sophomore year and I was just sticking with sprints. And then junior year, I was like, I'll try cross country just to stay in shape for track. That was decent. Not as fast as Adrian had, of course, but I was decent, you know, but I was like, track's my thing. And when we were going through our recruiting process, there's actually a few colleges that's like, we want to do like psychological and physical studies on YouTube just because you like have the same genetic makeup, except one of you guys run distance, one of you guys run sprints. And they kind of wanted to see like why and see like the science behind it. That's awesome, man. I, did, what kind of results did you get back or anything? Anything? No, so we actually never tested. So the college I wanted to do it, we actually didn't go there. You know, oh, can, back can back. represent UVU, you know, but yeah. that was, it was interesting. So I never thought about it. I was like, I don't know. We just ran different events, but now I think about it. I'm like, we like this. We, Cause you see us, we look the exact same, same body type, obviously same face and everything. So I was like, it's weird that we run different events. How interesting. That's cool. Uh, I want to talk now about education, though. You got your bachelor's in, I want to make sure, behavioral science, and then you're getting your master's in uh, business administration. What's next on, or like going up on the lineup for you? <clears throat> yeah, so I'm kind of debating because I got my, my emphasis for the MBA is in management, but I'm thinking I might want to try to do marketing and um, accounting, maybe, and kind of finance. Just kind of broaden my horizons, kind of just sky's the limit for me. Um, but I actually didn't plan to do business at first. So I started, I, like you said, my bachelor's in behavioral science. Me and my brothers wanted to open a family practice for marriage and family therapy. So that's what all of our undergrad was in. And then the program only accepts like 12 people per year. So Adrian got accepted the first year and I was not accepted at that time. So I was like, okay, I'll never retake some classes. I'll go, I'm gonna get up next year. The next year comes around, Demetrius got accepted, but I didn't get accepted. So I'm like, come on now. <laughs> um, so I was like, all right, I'm going to get an MBA. And then if I can't be a therapist or kind of be in your business with you, I'll run your business for you. So that's kind of what how I looked at it. I love how there's this family plan. <laughs> like is. for everything. I love how close you and your brothers are. That's awesome. Yeah, we can't split us up at all. Family is family is everything. Now, is your, is your collegiate athletic career over with it? I believe with the Stan Bates Award, it's usually it's for seniors that are done. Yeah. Uh, but I know with the COVID year and, and all that kind of thing, uh, do you have any uh, eligibility left? Nope. So my uh, career is over now. I just finished a couple months ago, which is a real bittersweet moment, you know. I won conference in both events again by like in like milliseconds, like 0 0.001 second and 0 0.02 seconds. So it was close on both of them. But yeah, my co collegiate career is over. Agent came back for one year because he registered this year. Then Demetrius had a medical registered. So they're both competing still. So they're on year six and seven. <laughs> That's crazy. Well, I want to hear a favorite memory that you've had from Utah Valley, both maybe not on the track, but also on the track. Yeah, so my favorite on the track memory is going to be that first time I won conference just because it was kind of, I was excited. I was like, yeah, I finally won, let's go. But it was also like, my brothers cannot hold this over me anymore. You know, so I'm like, I, I did it. I finally did it. So that was my mo that was my favorite memory uh, track wise. And then just non track wise, my favorite memory is just just it's not really just one memory, but it's just meeting all my all my best friends on my track team, and all my friends that we kind of moved into live together. Mm -hmm. Just kind of seeing where we went from when we were freshmen to how we've moved up now and everyone's kind of just moving away. So it's kind of just a whole memory of all of us together. Just kind of thinking back on it. I'm just like, man, I can't want to change that experience for the world. Do you plan on staying in Utah? I know you're originally from Idaho. Are you planning on staying in the area or what uh, What future plans do you have here? Yeah, so right now I'm kind of 
just jo- in the job search right now. I'm just hunting, you know? So yeah, it'd be nice to stay in Utah. I got my brothers here and everything. We're all living together. So it's just kind of be good to stay put if I find a job, but I'm kind of just anywhere that the job will take me to eventually succeed, get to that next level. Just because, you know, I'm an athlete. I always want to compete, always get better. So whatever's going to help me just elevate the most, that's where I'll go. Well, Andre, obviously, congratulations on a very successful career. Congratulations on the Sam Bates Award. Thanks so much for hopping on with us. We're wishing you the best of luck. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. All right, that is Andre Jones. I also want to thank Chris Thompson, who was on the show. And thank you for listening to the WAC Podcast. Make sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. And check out our website at WACsports.com.